I just love people to begin with, but mainly I love saving lives, and that's what it's all about. To me, this is not a job or a business. This is my passion. I just, I just love exactly what I'm doing. It, it's, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. But then there's those people that aren't fine. And, sir, if they didn't come in here to see us, I mean, who knows what would happen. Uh, one that stands out, and I'll always stand out with me, that I tell everybody about, it was Thanksgiving one year. Wednesday, this gentleman, before Thanksgiving, came in and got scanned. And uh, we, everybody was off on Thursday. I came back on Friday. And my job, not only to take care of the patients, but also call them should there be an issue with their calcium score being high and major blockages. So I made a call to this gentleman on Friday, had to leave a voicemail, stressed how important it was for him to get back to me. Okay, So the weekend went by. I came back on Monday. Uh, the receptionist passed a call back to me, says, the gentleman's on the phone and he's in tears. He needs to talk to you. Uh, passed it through to me, and it was the gentleman that I had left a message for. It was his son. He could not get a hold of his father on Thanksgiving. He went over Friday to check on him, and he had died. He was dead in the floor. He had had a massive heart attack. What's so sad is the son said, Judy, I begged, I begged my father to call you two weeks ago. If he'd come in, yes, sir, we could have seen the major, major blockages at that time because we get it, your results in 24 hours. And I, I would have notified him. He could already went to his cardiologist, had quad bypass surgery, whatever he needed, and take care of that. But for him to keep po postponing and putting off and put off, you can't put off your health. Not at all. And if he'd have came in two weeks prior, he'd have still been here today. Matter of fact, about four months ago, a gentleman that came in and I made the call to him to tell him, and he took everything to his cardiologist, and I have a compassion with my patients. When I call them to confirm their appointment, if they don't answer, I will personally text them from my phone. So they have my text, they have my personal text, my phone. So I'm sitting on the couch one night watching TV, and I get this text describing, Judy, you saved my life. He's, my wife and I are such in your honor for this. I had to go, I had quad bypass surgery, da, 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 da. If I hadn't have came into life imaging, I probably wouldn't be here today. And that's just one of them. It's just, it's just so rewarding. He just, he just went on and on. And he, he's just, he thanks me every day. I mean, he texts me, you know, how are you doing, Judy? Thank you so much again. I tell people, you know, if this, your calcium score is 400 or above, I'm the lady that calls you, and I always tell people, no matter how much you love me, you never want to hear from me again. Sometimes I do feel like the Grim Reaper. I mean, I have to make these calls, but I'd rather make these calls to save lives than, I don't, I don't think, and I, I talk to them like, and I always say, hypothetically, sir, I'm going to talk to you like you're my uncle, okay? And I talk to them heart to heart like a human being to a human being, because I'm not a doctor. So, you know, and I afford it to their doctor. I do anything I can. Our customer service is amazing, amazing. And that's what makes me feel so good because I go above and beyond. This is what I tell them. I said, do you have kids? Do you have grandkids? If you don't do it for yourself, do it for them. Wouldn't you rather know today than worry about tomorrow? I mean, wouldn't you think Steve Jobs would give up all his money to be here today? You don't take your car in until you have issues. Is that correct? Okay. You don't go see your doctor until you have issues. Is that correct? So let's say you take your car in and it's on its last leg and you take it in and they'll say, uh, you need a new transmission, whatever it may be. So you can't go into a doctor right now and say, I want, a, I want a CT scan, a CAT scan. The doctor will say, well, what's wrong with you? Do you have any issues, symptoms, what's the matter? You can't go in and take control of your own health. You have to have an issue and sometimes it's too late. I mean. Lung cancer, uh, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer, there's no issues to you. Normally you're in stage four and it's too late. Insurance will not pick a dime of this up. They uh, consider it preventative medicine. If you come in, when you come in and get scanned, if we find something, then you can take it to your doctor and then your doctor will tell you exactly where you need to go, whether it be a cardiologist or a cancer doctor or something to that. And at that time, can, uh, your insurance will pick that up. Okay, in other words, we're preventative. And then they take over from there if there is an issue. We put things off, I do that, I hate to say it. I may have a cramp here or a pain here or whatever and I just push it off, push it off, push it off. Had a lady, pancreatic cancer. She was having the worst back pain, the worst back pain ever. I'll never forget this. And so 
she had already been to a doctor and the doctor did not order any CAT scan, no MR, nothing. She came in, got scanned by us, we found the issue, she took it to her doctor and it was too late. Ruth, she died, she died. She had the, she had the symptoms and she kept telling her doctor, doctor thought she was nothing, you, you lifted something, you're okay. He didn't even bother to send her for other tests to even see. That's wrong, that's just so wrong. You have to take control of your life. And this facility like this, you don't have to have a symptom. Take control of your own life. Absolutely. We caught breast cancer in a man a month ago. Breast cancer in a man. And when I had to call to tell him that you have a lump in your left breast, and I said, sir, when you shower, we women, we do our breast it. Men don't. So I had asked, they had me on speakerphone. I asked his wife to lay him on the bed and feel here. There was it. And he went, and it's, it's cancer. He had a biopsy done. It's cancer, yeah. Oh, I got stories, I do, but I got good stories too, saving lives, and they send me cards, they bring me cookies, they, I mean, it's amazing, you save my life, I mean, and their kids will call me, and one gentleman I loved to death in, in Atlanta when I worked there, uh, I would call him, he calls me Miss Nashville, and I would call him about once a month, I'd call him every week, but once a month I'd go get him, we'd go to the Marietta Diner and have lunch, we sure would, we would, yep. He was a walking time, he had, his calcium score was 10,000. Doctor couldn't open him up or anything. He's a walking time bump. He's too old and too obese. And it was so high that if he opened up, he could have died on an operating table. So he tried to enjoy life where he was. And I, I, I wanted to be a part of that. I tell him, do you want to be on, <laughs> I mean, do you want to see your kids grow up? Do you want to, I want to walk my grandson. I want to go to his wedding. A lot of people, oh, I'm okay, okay. Again, you should do it for yourself, but if not, do it for your family. Take control of your life. Use this as a vehicle like you drive your vehicle. Take care of this as well and do it today because tomorrow might be too late. I want to tell you right now as far as being a part to saving lives in the last years that I've been in this business, I have saved probably close to 500 lives. And imagine the lives that I have touched by saving those lives of their surrounding family. It's just, it's, it's so rewarding. I love it. I love it.